I'm really excited today. I'm fishing with Captain Ben, ben Wolf with Sportfish Michigan, and we're at the mouth of the Platte River, the world-renowned Platte River, and we'll explain what that means shortly. And uh, uh, we're fishing for coho salmon. And uh, uh, this has been an exciting trip planned for me. I've never done anything like this. I've talked to Ben a number of times, and he says, hey, there's a lot of ways these people are catching fish. And naturally, you got people trolling. You got fly, fly fishermen all over the place, like the guy in front of us. You got bottom fishermen. And uh, you guys kind of got onto a bite that's a little bit different. And man, it's a lot more fun. That was what was exciting to me. We're gonna be doing deep water jigging. Tell us a little bit about why these fish are here as I idle by all these people. Sure. Well, we're, you know, we're, we're coming out of the mouth of the Platte River, and this is the birthplace of the entire multi-billion dollar Great Lakes salmon industry. Look at that. So, look, at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. All I mean, we, we have salmon in the river, we have salmon out in the lake. It's just a special place to be, you know, the Michigan DNR back in the mid 1960s planted coho salmon here right on this very river and we're out here trying to enjoy the fishery that has then been the result of that, uh, that stocking initially. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Tell us a little bit about Sportfish Michigan and, and uh, uh, what it's all about. Well, Sportfish Michigan is a, a network of some of the top charter nuts. captains and guides in the state. And we really try and concentrate on just about anything that someone wants to do fishing wise, you know, we can provide it for them. Whether it's fishing in a river on fly, whether it's fishing in a river with, you know, traditional gear or trolling or jigging, bass fishing is big for us. Uh, walleye fishing is also big for us, you know, so really almost anything someone wants to do fishing wise, we have someone around the state that is, you know, uh, a qualified captain or a guide and really knows their thing um, and, and is able to have a great time with customers. Okay, Ben, it's my understanding this whole area here, we're, we're, we're going to look for fish and as soon as we get down, I'm going to go up, drop the trolling motor, you're going to kind of move through here, you see a pot of fish here, here I immediately hit spot lock. We dropped on and we set the hut. That's exactly it. <laughs> kind of. Okay, let's go. One of the most incredible tools I've fished with in many years, the Ultrex. Okay, we got some fish right here, Al. Nice school right here. All right, so we've got that fish dropping down here. You can see the up and down, that's the jig. We've got another coho there, another coho sweeping down. So I'm hoping that we're gonna get bit real quickly here. I had a really nice one come up about six feet to come inspect the jig and, you know, kind of follow it around a little bit. You know, and with these hummingbird graphs, you can really see everything that's happening below. You know, the, the jig, where the jig is in relation to the fish. Um, and that's what, you know, it's, it's really critical to our success, uh, success out here. Let's see if we can get some commitment. There we go. Get him. Yep. We got commitment. <laughs> I like it. Me too. He's coming, coming hard, wasn't she? He's gonna jump. I'm liking it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Ooh. Okay. Let's get her in. And whoa. You can, when that happens, they pull just slightly different, don't they? They do. They do. All right, here you go, bro. Oh, all right. And the jig I think it right just, uh, just came out, man. All right, so this one swirled on my jig and, uh, you know, missed the jig and ended up getting it, um, come on. <laughs> they don't cooperate. And ended up getting it in the side. And, you know, snagging here in Michigan is illegal. So we're gonna let this fish go. You know, typically they eat it in the mouth, but sometimes we do. Yeah, you can see where she was. Yep. She but sometimes, out. you know, that jig's fluttering and moving around, and sometimes they miss it. So we're going to let this one go. When you're dealing with that reaction bite like, like this, that happens with a jig and wrap on walleyes a lot. 
you, you, you know, they'll swing at the bait, you know, it's so fast, and you'll hook them like in a corner of the face, uh, uh, underneath the gill, they, you, you know, you, you just happen to jig and jog when they go the other way. But that's the nature of that reaction bite. Yeah, 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 you know, and then uh, the amazing thing is some days, everything is down the throat. You, you, you know, isn't that amazing? And that kind of bite, how that happens? So, you know, Al, it, it, these, these jigs are fluttering all around. They're, they're falling erratically. And these fish are trying to pinpoint how to eat it. And, you know, it's an aggression bite. It's a reaction strike. And it's tough to sometimes peg a, a moving target. It really is. Well, I, I, I pulled to some of them higher fish. I'm going to go back down again. He went to bite. That fish went to bite. Yep, like that one. Oh, finally. There, there was too many fish there. There was too many fish there. This segment is brought to you by Gill Technical Fishing Gear. I see, I see a flash. I like that, I like that. Okay, okay. All right, coming up. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. There we go. All right, get this unhooked here. Alrighty. Ooh, there's a really nice school down there. I'm gonna try and get another one. You know, we have, the DNR is estimating right now that we may see a run close to 40,000 coho salmon running up that one Platte River, which is just a staggering number. We've already got 20,000 that have been accounted for in the river, and so, Statistically, we may have as many as another 20,000 out here to fish for. Is that a better run than normal? It sounds like an awful lot of fish to me. Why would they have put that many fish in there? You know, that actually is a high number uh, for a return. You know, typically it's closer to 15 to 20,000. And really, it, it, it doesn't have as much to do with what the DNR is doing as how many actually survived. Um, we're seeing a, a, a more of a balance now between the predator and prey relationship with the alewife. And the alewife is what's predominantly the forage base for these salmon, king salmon, coho salmon, and, um, and even the occasional pink salmon that we have. All right, Al, let's go ahead and see if we can't find another school here. Well, what I like about it, you don't have to move far. You just idle around, idle around and there's another pot of fish here, a pot of fish there, a pot of fish here. This is such neat fishing. <laughs> another, another quick, quick acid for that spot lock on my, my Minn Kota. <laughs> you know, it's such an amazing tool. All we're doing again, we, we moves around, he watches the electronics, bingo, as soon as he sees a pot of those fish, I hit spot lock on this thing, you drop right over. You do this in, with the lake trout in, 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 at, at different times, the salmon, the white, everything, right? Exactly. That you guys use for jigging. Exactly. That that spot lock feature on those Minkotas is a lifesaver and it's critical to us being able to bolt fish. Yeah, you can stay so much on. We on it? We on them. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> you see all kinds of boats at every size, shape, and style out here taking advantage of, of what's going on here. That kayak bite's really been growing, man. You see, see it everywhere. You can almost anticipate, like, hey, you know, like right now, I've got two fish coming in right now. I've got one looking at it. So you can almost not call your shots, but you know that you're at least getting attention. And that's really, you know, for this technique, being able to, to have a good graph, being able to understand what the graph is telling you is really, really a key component to being successful. Got him. There you go. Yeah. Oh, got him, got him, got him. Oh, don't know. Ooh, she's coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up right here. Coming up. Oh, she was going to brush you. There she is. There we go. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think he ate it, too. That one, that one. Boy, you got her coming in quick. Get, get up here, get up here, get up here. 
Oh. Bet you that when they attack, they attack so quickly. Holy cow. She just woke up. <laughs> Oh. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Ooh, Be cooked. Be cooked. There you go. Woo. There you go, bro. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a nice little nice male. One. Yeah. I always like to bleed out fish, and I cut the gills to do that, and it's just a much, much better fillet. You know, it's cleaner, and it just, I think, produces a much better quality. All righty. There's more fish to drop in on, and, you know, we're vertical jigging these coho salmon out here today, and this technique has really gained in popularity in the last several years. And it's something that we started offering our customers about five years ago. Um, vertical jigging uh, spoons, for, you know, has been really popular for other species like lake trout, whitefish, cisco, burbot. And, you know, I heard some guys were, were catching salmon on these jigging spoons. And I thought, you know, let's go try that because as a bass angler, I like to feel the bite. I like to be able to impart the action on the rod and the bait and really feel that bite, feel the, you know, the whole battle the entire time. So it was really just kind of adapting the techniques for whitefish and uh, cisco and lake trout that we were using to try and figure out how to trigger these, these salmon. And you know, over the course of the last several years, we've offered these trips to the customers and, and they've absolutely fallen in love with it just like we have, because they get to experience the entire thing from start to finish. You know, this technique, when these fish are staging, and they're stationary, it, we can stay right on top of a school, make small adjustments, you know, where if you're trolling, you're gonna troll right through that school and you can turn around, but sometimes that school's gone. Here, with something like spot lock, we could sit right on top of a school, make a small adjustment with our trolling motor and spot lock and get on that school again and stay right on top of them. So, you know, for us, this is a tremendous hands-on technique that we can offer our customers that uh, they wanna experience something new. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. One drop. Oh. Whoa. Oh. I just changed did, colors. Did you really? And you know, on a slower bite, sometimes you just don't know what they want. And I changed colors. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, he's hooked yeah, right. She, she, he's yeah. hooked right yeah, in the face. Just, yeah, she's right, right where you <laughs> want her. She's got kind of a crazy one. I like that. <laughs> it is amazing. It's amazing how crazy these fish get. Yeah. I mean, when you stick them, they just get, I mean, crazy. You're going to jump again? It is so much fun. <laughs> this never, ever gets old. I was just going to say, 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 so the bite, it, it, this is truly addicting. It is absolutely addicting. All right. There. Oh. There. Whew. There you go. That was the first drop on that color change. Unbelievable. There, there you go. Right in the cor corner of the, the mouth. For this deep water right. jigging technique, you need a bait that drops like a rock. The Rapala flat jig is designed for this type of fishing. And when it comes to spoons, they need to be fairly heavy. We're using two ounce jigging spoons. And one important thing, they gotta glow. You, you know, I, I got to ask you a, 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 a question. You know, I know I hear and go into the bait shops here and I look at the, the trout and salmon fishery and there's a zillion colors, probably more than there is in, in plastic worms for bass. 
Obviously, these fish must be somewhat color conscious at different, talk to me about color. Ted, what, what, what's your belief on color and what do you see? You're, you've been on here for many years. Well, I do believe that there is a very distinct color uh, preference that these fish have. You know, with the clear water that we have here in Lake Michigan and, and Platte Bay, these fish can see extremely well. And, you know, cohos really seem to like, when they're staging, we use uh, chartreuse and white a lot. When these fish move shallow, just adjacent to the river mouth, they almost entirely switch to black. And black is just, I don't know what it is about it, but black is really a day in, day out, the go-to for just about every angler. And you know, you go to those bait shops and you'll see just lots and lots of those black, uh, you know, lures for those fish that are about to run the river. You know, probably one of the most important parts of, of this system of fishing, as I understand it, is the line. This is Suffolk's 832 braid, 30 pound test. And uh, uh, I've got fluorocarbon on it. And I guess, guess Ben said anything like from 14 to, to 20 pound, I, I got Suffolk floral uh, again on here. That's all you need for leader material. And then the rods will vary. vary. We're fishing bait casting. He, he likes bait casting. Most of his guys do. It's a pretty simple way, way of fishing. I got a Tatula, Daiwa Tatula. This is my bread and butter reel for everything. I use it for ba bass fishing. Mo most conditions I fish with a Tatula. And then uh, uh, I, I've got a, a St. Croix Legend Tournament Series. It, it, it's a 7-1 medium heavy. Yeah, you know, and, and it's a little heavier, but that's all I ha had that was right for this. I could have a little softer rod, but I didn't bring one. But that's what I'm using here, and, and it, it's working sufficiently. Oh, got him. There you go. Uh-huh. Love it. Hang on, hang on. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, it just came off. Just popped out, yeah. It just came off. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Huh? Nice fish. Beautiful. They're all running really nice size. So ben told me about this bite. And he says, you gotta come up and try it. Yeah, you know, and I got to thinking a little, little bit. I, I says, he's in some of the best smallmouth fishing in the world is in his backyard. So I brought some smallmouth stuff, but I got, we went out the first day and we started doing 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 the, the coho jigging bite. It's addicting. That's the, that's all I can say. It's addicting. It is so much fun. And uh, uh, this is something that 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 you need to try. You're looking for a bit of an adventure, uh, 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 something different from your daily routine of bass fishing or walleye fishing or crappie fishing or anything. You gotta come up here and take take a look at this. You like to explore and have an adventuresome spirit. Give Ben a call. They got guides on here that know how to catch these fish. And this particular bite, jigging, I really liked it. And I know I'd, I'd get into the lake trout, which which would be fun. You got the white fish, you got everything else. So I just wanted to say, say thanks, but all the bass stuff never came out. <laughs> we, we talked about it. We we're gonna go catch some smallmouth. Yep. I said, the heck with it. This jigging for coho, it's addicting. That's all I can say, bro. It's a dick thing. <laughs> and I'll be back on a lake trout bite next year, which is what, a little bit earlier than this? You know, it starts in May really well and goes all the way through the, the season closure at the end of September. So, wow. and it just gets better and better as the summer goes on. It's phenomenal. I like the word phenomenal. See you on the water. Hey, for more info on all Michigan has to offer, check out Sportfish Michigan. They'll set you up big time. You know, lately I've been having a really 
hard time falling asleep. My mind is racing like crazy. I'm thinking about a lot of things. And you want to sleep, and every hour you're waking up, and I'm looking at the clock, and it's an hour later, and it really bugs me. And then I get this uh, report from the Mayo Clinic in the, in the mail. It actually went to my wife that talked about sleep and all of the elements of sleep. And I want to read a few things to you that really kind of got my attention. Don't take sleep lightly. Many have regarded sleep as a useless waste of time, seeing no purpose in it. But science and medicine are discovering an increasingly large number of things about the value and importance of sleep, especially the stages of deep sleep. Without any sleep, people would literally go insane. But even insufficient amounts of sleep increase the risk of heart disease and cancer. Wow. Knowing that sleep is restorative, not only the way you feel, but also your brain and body can help you make a commitment to get the sleep you need to live a longer and healthier life. So when I read, when I read that stuff, I went to my concordance. See this book here? It tells me everything in the Bible that relates to a particular subject. When I punched up sleep, there was all kinds of scriptures that related to sleep, but I want to read a few of them to you because it just gave me a great amount of peace. The first one is in Psalm 4, verse 8. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. Then I went to Psalm 29, or I'm sorry, Psalm 27. This is a good one. It is vain for you to rise up early and take rest late to eat the bread of anxious toil, for he gives his blessings to his beloved in sleep. This, by the way, is the Amplified Bible. And then, when you lie down and you shall not be afraid, yes, you shall lie down and your sleep shall be sweet. God's word has something for everybody. I don't care what the subject is, what you're dealing with in life. You can look in the concordance, you could look at the word, and there is something in this book that deals with it. And it is always short, sweet and to the point and it works. I believe it is truly the inspired word of God and you can never change my mind about it because I experienced so many things. Things as simple as getting a good night's sleep. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, have a good safe fishing season. Whoops. And we'll see you underwater. water.